The clever young man who recently made it to the White House is a very fine hypnotist, partly because it is indeed extraordinary to see an African-American at the pinnacle of power in the land of slavery. However, this is the 21st century, and race, together with gender and even class, can be very seductive tools of propaganda. For what is so often overlooked and what matters, I believe, above all, is the class one serves. George Bush's inner circle, from the State Department to the Supreme Court, was perhaps the most multiracial in presidential history. It was PC par excellence. Think Condoleezza Rice, Colin Powell. It was also the most reactionary. Obama's very presence in the White House appears to reaffirm the moral nation. He's a marketing dream. But like Calvin Klein or Benetton, he is a brand that promises something special, something exciting, almost risque, as if he might be radical, as if he might enact change. He makes people feel good. He's a postmodern man with no political baggage, and all that's fake. In his book, Dreams from My Father, Obama refers to the job he took after he graduated from Columbia in 1983. He describes his employer as, and I quote, a consulting house to multinational corporations, unquote. For some reason, he doesn't say who his employer was or what he did there. The employer was Business International Corporation, which has a long history of providing cover for the CIA with covert action and infiltrating unions and the left. I know this because it was especially active in my own country, Australia. Obama doesn't say what he did at Business International, and there may be absolutely nothing sinister, but it seems worthy of inquiry and debate as a clue to perhaps who the man is. During his brief period in the Senate, Obama voted to continue the wars in, Ir in Iraq and Afghanistan. He voted for the Patriot Act. He refused to support a bill for single-payer health care. He supported the death penalty. As a presidential candidate, he received more corporate backing than John McCain. He promised to close Guantanamo as a priority, but instead he's excused torture, reinstated military commissions, kept the Bush Gulag intact, and opposed habeas corpus. Daniel Ellsberg the great whistleblower, was right, I believe, when he said that under Bush a military coup had taken place in the United States, giving the Pentagon unprecedented powers. These powers have been reinforced by the presence of Robert Gates, a Bush family crony, and George W. Bush's powerful Secretary of Defense, and by all the Bush Pentagon officials and generals who have kept their jobs under Obama. In the middle of a recession, with millions of Americans losing their jobs and homes, Obama has increased the military budget. In Colombia, he is planning to spend $46 million on a new military base that will support a regime backed by death squads and further the tragic history of Washington's intervention in that region. In a pseudo-event in Prague, Obama promised a world without nuclear weapons to a global audience mostly unaware that America is building new tactical nu nuclear weapons designed to blur the distinction between nuclear and conventional war. Like George Bush, he used the absurdity of Europe threatened by Iran to justify building a missile system aimed at Russia and China. In another pseudo-event at the Annapolis Naval Academy, decked with flags and uniforms, Obama lied that America had gone to Iraq to bring freedom to that country. He announced that the troops were coming home. This was another deception. The head of the army, General George Casey, says with some authority that America will be in Iraq for up to a decade. Other generals say 15 years. Chris Hedges, the very fine author of Empire of Illusion, <clears throat> puts it very well. President Obama, he wrote, 
does one thing and brand Obama get you to believe another. This is the essence of successful advertising. You buy or do what the advertiser wants because of how they make you feel." Unquote. And so you are kept in a perpetual state of childishness. He calls this junk politics.